this has been a long time coming. Um, something I want to put out on YouTube for a while now is a calibration video of this Hammer K3 table saw. Um, I think if you follow this methodology, you'll end up with really good results. Uh, and it's worked well for me for years now. And hopefully you'll find it useful as well. So there's a lot of preparation uh, going into this to make sure uh, subsequent steps in the calibration go well. The first step is leveling this sliding table. Uh, in order to do that, uh, there's some adjustment bolts underneath and I'll show you where those are at and the best method in order to adjust those. You can see that there's a bolt that runs all the way through from the sliding table bed assembly to uh, the chassis of the table saw. So that bolt's secured there in a T-slot. This top nut right there, um, that's securing that bolt to that T-slot. This middle nut is your height adjustment and ultimately is what you're going to use to adjust the level of the sliding table saw relative to the cast iron top. The bottom nut here secures the entire bolt assembly um, so that way everything's secured from the sliding table saw to the chassis itself. There's six bolts total on my table saw. Uh, my table saw has about 49 inches of travel I believe and I'm going to show you quickly where those six locations are at so you'll be able to find them. So here's two more, those bolts. And the last two bolts are here. Now that the lower nut is loosened on all six bolts, we can now start calibrating the height. You see I have my wrench installed uh, on this middle nut and watch how my straight edge uh, gap changes between it and the cast iron top here. You can see it changes as I start adjusting that middle nut, okay? Now the key to this height adjustment is that you make small incremental changes on all the bolts before doing another incremental change. And the reason for that is if you go too much on one end, it's gonna dr drop the other end of the sliding table, okay? So if, uh, if you make small changes, it's easy to keep up with. If you make big changes, it's gonna be hard to keep up with and it's gonna get frustrating. So again, do small changes with this middle nut um, and then you should be fine. So for this portion of the calibration, we're looking to make this sliding table parallel with the blade. Felder specs want this blade toe out relative to the sliding table um, by about 3,000 thousand inch. Uh, I prefer to have it parallel or maybe toe out by a thousand inch. So where we are at right now is that lower nut on all six bolts is just hand tight, okay? And the reason being is we're gonna make adjustments um, to either end of this sliding table um, to get it parallel with this blade. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, so you'll notice that this blade's a little bit different. This is a calibration blade uh, offered by Forrest. Okay, uh, I don't know how much this thing costs. I think maybe around a hundred bucks. Um, but I prefer using this when I'm doing this calibration. You don't need it. You can use uh, any saw blade. Now, if you're using, um, you know, if you have a hammer with a 12 inch blade, I'd recommend using the 12 inch blade. It gives you a little bit more travel to work with and get a more accurate results. All right, let's get started. I wanted to take a minute to talk about run out on a table saw blade. Uh, what occurs is there's a little bit of wobble in the arbor of your motor. And what that causes is that uh, table saw blade to move as it's rotating. So closely watch the deflection on this dial indicator and you can actually see the run out and even measurement. Okay, so in order to account for that, when we're making sure that this sliding table is parallel to this blade, we'll actually take a relative measurement at the front of the blade and the back of the blade. So I made a mark here on this table saw blade in the front, okay. And then I'll move it to the back and take another measurement. So that's gonna be the methodology I'm gonna use. Um, just wanna clear up any confusion on why I might be doing that. 
Okay. After making several small adjustments and tightening down the nuts on all six of the bolts, uh, this is where I've ended up. I'm going to narrow or zero out this dial indicator. Okay. And uh, counting for run out, I'm going to go ahead and move this blade. And what I'm showing is just a little bit of toe the next out. calibration I want to do real quick is blade tilt adjustment. And there's a couple different stops that you can put in on this tilting acne screw here. Obviously you have this adjustment wheel here, mix up with this screw, and you can see that stop. Okay, right there. Um, that's my 45 degree stop. And right in here is my 90 degree stop. So, uh, or to use the, you can see that it just gets adjusted by a, it's like a Allen key. Uh, it'll allow you to make adjustments to that stop. Here's a better view of it. And I haven't messed with these because uh, once you set it up, I haven't had any issues with it. So um, I'll let you adjust those as you need. But here, let's show you where I have it. And again, I kept my calibration blade in for this. It's definitely something you want to do before we square up the cross-cut fence. Um, we don't want there to be any uh, calibration issues there. Okay, so now I have it square. Um, and then for the 45 degree, I would, whatever you have available to you, same thing, except obviously you tilt this at 45 degrees, uh, bring in your 45 <clears throat> degree square, um, and then uh, adjust the set point as you need to. I just wanted to take a moment to review the different cross-cut fence stop options available. This is an upgrade version uh, available from Felder. Uh, you can purchase it through them. I don't know if it's on their website or if you need to give them a call. But the upgrade basically eliminated all play that was in this assembly right here. And it also uses a threaded screw to position this lever um, so that way you can adjust the tilt on this guy as much as you need to. Before this system, I had uh, this system here. Uh, looks obviously very similar. I think this bolt had just a little bit more play in it previously. And then say using a threaded bolt to adjust this lever, it used a cammed bolt, okay? So uh, this was cammed in order to adjust this up and down. Um, and I think this is a bit of an improvement uh, I feel like I can make smaller incremental changes with the threaded connection versus this canned uh, connection. So I really think this is worth getting if it's in your budget. In order to square up the cross-cut fence, I like to start with just using my triangle square. And what this does for me is it gets me close. Uh, right now I can see I just have a little bit of play between my cross-cut fence and my saw blade. So I'll make some adjustments here. and. Uh, after it's nice and flush uh, with this square, I'll move on to the five cut method for calibration. I wanted to give you a visual representation of the five cut method and what it's actually accomplishing for you. So right here I have my bevel gauge set to an acute angle, uh, let's say 89 degrees or so. Okay. Um, it's up against my cross cut fence um, and we're out by one degree. This black line represents the off cut. So that'd be my first cut. I'll rotate it. Okay. And this is the black line again is going to be my second cut. And it's in this second cut, you can actually start to see the error start to propagate. Okay. This is going to be my third cut. Okay. My fourth cut. And now, my fifth and final cut, back to where I started. And as you can see from, uh, from this visual representation, once you get to this fifth cut, you're going to have some error that you can measure. And you're going to be able to measure at each end of this board, um, take the difference 
and that'll give you your error over the entire length or perimeter of this piece. So it turns out that it looks like I'm out about six thou over 80 inches or so. That's really tight tolerances. Um, that's pretty incredible that you can get that from this machine. I'm very happy with that. Uh, I will say uh, that I would have been happy even if the tolerances weren't as tight as that. And I've definitely evolved over time on my expectations for these kind of machines and just for my woodworking in general. And what I'm trying to say is you don't need tight tolerances to put out really good work. Um, so don't drive yourself crazy. Get out there and have some fun. With that, that's all I have for uh, this cross-cut fence and sliding table. I'll uh, be moving on to the rip fence and how to make calibration adjustments there. So moving on to the rip fence calibration, uh, obviously you want your rip fence to be parallel with your blade. If it's uh, you know, skewed to the left or skewed to the right and you need to make adjustments, what you do is you actually make adjustments to this entire bar here. Um, and you have some bolts and some nuts and you can uh, manipulate the position of this bar at different spots along its length uh, to get it to where you need it. Um, and then if you uh, want to check your work, uh, you just start making rip cuts and you make sure that uh, each cut is parallel and that you're not seeing excessive burning or pinching while you're moving the board uh, through the saw blade. So, and that's really all there is to it. Uh, I haven't had too many issues with this. Uh, once I had it set up right, um, it hasn't moved or come out of alignment. So um, that is the proper way to do it. And I hope that clears it up for anyone that um, might be confused.